Hello everyone, back tuning into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the E7DF 30 day ensemble model uh, for today's first video. So this is going to be covering not just the UK, but the whole of Europe as uh, well. We're at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this. So a big thank you to them for supplying uh, this formerly very exclusive access uh, stuff. It's stuff wasn't publicly available till a short time ago more and more from the ECMWF uh, extended models is coming online uh, now so uh, eventually we will be able to get uh, mean sea level pressure and also 500 millibar heights I think for the 30 day ensembles but at the moment we can only have temperature and precipitation uh, are not anomalies for you so uh, you get a rough idea though from those temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies what's going to be happening what could be happening uh, in terms of this overall setup mean sea level, sea level pressure or 500 millibar height anomaly setup over the next month so that's what you're going to be doing for today's uh, first video um, coming up this afternoon we'll have a, your regular week to take day update i did say we'd have the october forecast for you today that's actually been pushed back to tomorrow um bit uh, snowed under with updates at the moment so the october forecast pushed back to tomorrow uh and you'll be able to see what we're forecasting for october uh tomorrow It'll be the first video up i would have thought tomorrow morning but starting us all off today is our look at the hungarian model um the ecmf yeah, model via the hungarian uh, met office so let's get on uh, with that. I'm going to start off with the temperature anomalies for the coming week. This is week one temperature anomalies. And uh, a pretty cool scene, really, uh, from the 1st through to the 7th of October across most parts of Europe. The coldest anomalies to average are up over Scandinavia. Up there, we're seeing uh, temperature anomalies of between 3 and 6 degrees below average, which will be low enough for snow uh, across parts of uh, um, Norway, Sweden, uh, I would have thought. And uh, not just over mountainous areas, I suspect there will be some snow even coming down to uh, lower levels with uh, such a cold temperature anomaly as that. Elsewhere across Europe, it isn't quite as cold as that, but it is colder than average. So, for example, much of the UK and Ireland, we're coming out between three, um, between one and three degrees below average. Many central parts of Europe, east parts of France, Germany, over towards Poland, and then southwards down towards countries like Hungary, we're again around one to three degrees below average. So it really is a very cool scene in the weekend across many parts of uh, Europe. You have to go down to the extreme southeast and southwest of the Mediterranean to find warmer temperature anomalies. So parts of Greece and over towards Turkey, uh, there we have temperature anomalies uh, forecast be to be be between one and three degrees above average and also parts of Spain and Portugal uh, forecast to be around one to three degrees above average so in the extreme southwest and the extreme southeast of the med we do find that it's warmer but generally quite a cool or even in some cases cold week coming up across many parts of Europe in the week ahead. Precipitation anomalies are looking like that. Quite a dry scene across many parts of Europe. So the UK and Ireland, we're coming out drier than average in the weekend. Most parts of Western Europe coming out drier than average. So France, now Spain, Portugal, we have uh, drier than average precipitation anomalies forecast there. Central parts of Europe forecast to be uh, drier than average. Then up to Scandinavia, a uh, bit of a mixed bag. So some parts of Norway, particularly Western and Northern Norway, way are coming out above average for precipitation some of that could well be snow of course down in the south of Norway uh, there it looks like we're drier than average and the same sort of mix of Sweden only the other way round so southern parts of Sweden a little bit above average with, with precipitation northern parts of Sweden a little bit uh, drier than average over into the far northeast of Europe uh, countries like Estonia Finland generally a little bit uh, above average with precipitation there and then going southwards into the eastern side of Europe. Most places forecast to be uh, drier than average. But we come down to Mediterranean, it does look very wet through particularly parts of southern Italy and over towards Greece. We've got a much wetter than average precipitation anomaly uh, there and back westwards towards Corsica and Sardinia. But further west than that, uh, through the Balearic Islands and in Spain and Portugal, it's drier than average. Overall, most parts of Europe cool and dry in the week ahead. As uh, so is how week two is uh, looking. It takes us from the 8th through to the 14th 
of uh, October. This is the temperature anomaly for the second week of October. And again, overall, it's coming out um, rather uh, warmer than average, particularly for central parts of Europe. So quite a big flip actually takes place there uh, between uh, weeks one and weeks two. So, um, yeah, we're looking at uh, substantially uh, warmer than average uh, temperature anomalies through central parts of Europe and up towards Scandinavia as well. The anomaly is again around one to three degrees uh, above average. Okay, again, quite a flip on what we see in uh, week one. So uh, just have a look at that. It's actually quite a dramatic turnaround. So that's week one temperature anomalies from the 1st to the 7th. That's week two temperature anomalies. Very, very uh, strikingly different. So, uh, again, most parts of Europe, including the UK and Ireland, forecast to be substantially warmer than average, with anomalies around 1 to 3 degrees through that second week of October. Southern and southeastern parts of Europe, so southern Italy, over towards countries like Greece, there we are coming out uh, a little bit cooler than average. But uh, it is a big flip around that uh, we're seeing there. As far as precipitation anomalies are concerned, a little bit wetter in the west of uh, Europe. So the UK, Ireland, going a bit wetter than average there overall. And down towards uh, France, Spain, Portugal, whilst it's not overly wet, it is quite wet for Portugal, but through Spain, France, not overly wet, does look wetter compared to uh, week one with uh, near average precipitation anomalies. Anywhere further east of that, though, and uh, overall it's a bit drier than an average. So from central parts of Europe down into the Balkans and then up towards northeastern Europe coming out drier than average there. Scandinavia looks quite dry across Sweden but a uh, little bit unsettled still through uh, parts of Norway. And then we move through into week three and uh, we're looking like this. So uh, in the third week, again, many parts of Europe coming out warmer than average. So after that cold first week that we had from the 1st to the 7th, actually we're turning into a relatively mild month across many parts of Europe uh, again. So Scandinavia down into much of Central and Western Europe. Uh, again, temperature anomalies around 1 to 3 degrees above average. Big turnaround for Scandinavia after that cold start to October. The UK and Ireland, things are cooling down a little bit there, going back closer to average, especially for Scotland and Ireland. England and Wales still a little bit uh, above average. Most of the Mediterranean also looking uh, warmer than average, so if you want a med uh, holiday in October, it's not looking too bad from a temperature perspective. This far southeastern corner of Europe, uh, a little bit uh, cooler uh, through those areas. Precipitation-wise, the signal is weakening, of course, as we get to week three. It, it usually does. We find eastern parts of Europe are turning out to be just that little bit drier than average. It's not a big deviation, but certainly from Germany eastwards uh, over towards the east of Europe, it does look a little bit uh, drier than average there. Free the Mediterranean, near normal precipitation, which does seem to the possibility of some heavy showers or thunderstorms through parts of the Med. And then coming northwards into France, UK, Ireland and Scandinavia. Overall quite close to average there. So possibly hinting that the second half of um, of uh, October 15th, 21st is possibly turning just that little bit more uh, unsettled perhaps from the Atlantic. And then finally we're into uh, week four and this one takes us from the 22nd through to the 28th of October. Again the signal is weakening but it looks as though it's cooling down in the west again. So the UK and Ireland possibly into it going a little bit cooler than average in that week. Um, much of France, Spain, Portugal close to average. In fact many parts of Europe forecast to have average temperatures in that um, final week of October 22nd to 28th. We really have to go down to the central base of the Mediterranean, so around the Côte d'Azur and towards parts of Italy, over the Adriatic, in towards uh, some parts of the Balkans. Possibly there we hint at being a little bit warmer than average, and maybe down towards Greece as well. But overall, it looks rather average with the temperature uh, anomalies as the signal is weakening. 
And then finally, as far as precipitation is concerned, so for far northwest of Europe, parts of northern France, Belgium, Holland, possibly Germany, UK and Ireland, we may be hinting at being a bit drier than average there. Some parts of the Mediterranean possibly hinting at being a little bit wetter than average, particularly through the central basin of the Mediterranean, probably down to autumnal thunderstorms. Otherwise, most parts of uh, Europe, particularly northern, eastern parts of Europe uh, being forecast to have average precipitation. Again, that is primarily, I would have thought, because the signal is uh, becoming weaker. So we start off cold across many parts of Europe through the first week of October. It does look substantially cooler or colder than average through that first week of uh, Europe and also relatively uh, dry conditions as well. But then it looks like things are changing in the second week. So we flip from being quite cold to being um, a lot warmer through the second week of October and also starts to turn a bit more unsettled uh, as well. And then those warm temperatures look like they take us up into the second second half of the month before perhaps cooling down a little bit, particularly in the north and the northwest of Europe towards month's end. Um, and also precipitation, of course, the signal is weakening uh, there. So we can't say too much about precipitation. But overall, it doesn't look overly wet this October, but maybe a little bit more unsettled than we've had um, over what has been a very dry period. And the main issue, uh, main thing about this update, is that we start off cold for the first week of October, but we do warm things up quite a lot as we get through into the second week and then into the middle part of the month. Next month's update, will, or next week's update, will just take us into the very start of November. So it'll be interesting to see what the ECMDF body is forecasting for uh, the final month of the uh, autumn as we go into the start of November uh, with, um, with next week's update. Coming up later on today on the homepage, we'll have a look at uh, weather for the next week to 10 days in detail. So come back that. I say October monthly forecast will be with you tomorrow as well as the five-day forecast and all the other features. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.